Hey guys, Saturday afternoon vlog. My main work now, my infrastructure work in terms of the apps and the uh, server component of what I do is now slowly, slowly coming to an end. Meaning after literally years of working out details about the most, mostly the Sudi web app and other things, we've got something pretty solid now. And so the role that I'm gonna be taking or the focus of my work is gonna flip from infrastructure foundational work flipping into uh, marketing. So I'm pretty stoked about that. One of the things uh, that you look at when you're setting up a new business is setting up workflows that are efficient. A workflow might be how you, uh, we'll talk about coding as an example, how you organize your team under you. It could be a team of you, one. It could be a team of three, four people. In terms of how the project work is um, handed out to various individuals or you know whether you're going to use github and your protocol if you will in terms of how you handle branching in terms of your code base and how it's submitted etc 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 et it could be also in terms of the type of servers that you use and how you're going to guarantee that your servers are properly backed up everything is up to date and patched and secure what is the protocol what is the workflow for that and because of me, where I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of content creation on the primary content creator. The workflow is in terms of how to produce the video, whether it be vlogging style, whether it be screencast, what is the process? What mics do you use? What cameras do you use? What editing software? How you integrate all these different things together. For instance, recently, somebody on YouTube, and thanks a lot for pointing that out, mentioned how my S's was getting into the ears because they had pretty good headphones. And that is uh, called S-ing in the um, audio, the audio industry, the audio, audio engineer industry, it's S-ing. So it's, it's like literally, depending on the individual speaker, they may emphasize the S, -s, -s, the S sound and it can pierce right into your ear. I know how it is. Uh, if you've got a certain type of headset, uh, you know, speakers. And so I really appreciate that guy pointing it out because I go, yeah, it's true. And it may happen only once in a while when you're speaking, you're going, yes, you, you, when you're saying a word rather that has S in it, like snakes. Uh, it's annoying though. It's annoying though. And especially in my situation where people might be listening to my videos for you know 10 minute videos at a time five minutes videos at a time and they got the headphones on they don't want no s's spearing into their eardrums right it's just annoying so what do i do in terms of workflow there's a couple options most people will um they'll deal with that with software you got software in your uh, your audio editing software where you can just it will take care of the s's it will it will track them nail them, nail them, we'll just, we'll just lower the volume for that split second as the S comes out so it doesn't pierce the person's ear. What I've done though, because of the editing software that I use, doesn't have very good sound editing tools. So I, what I used to have to do is export the sound into a separate file, import it into a separate app, apply the de -er filter to get rid of those annoying piercing S's, then bring it back into the video, integrate it, and then I'll put the whole thing. A lot of steps, a lot of steps. So what did I do? I went old school. I got, this is years ago, I got a de -er, which is a piece of hardware that you pipe, you pipe the mic right into it and the de -er will actually eliminate all the S-ing for you. And um, if I feel like it, I'm gonna put a picture of it right here. This is what it is, a piece of hardware from the, I think late 80s, early 90s. Nobody uses these anymore. But for me, it's super useful because I don't want to have to export my audio track, apply a filter, and bring it back in. It's all these extra steps. Now that I got the hardware de -er, it does it for me as I'm recording. Fantastic. So that's an example of working out a workflow. And really, when you're setting up a business or you're setting up your uh, process, your workflow process for uh, coding, the workflow is huge. Once you resolve your workflow, everything else becomes much, much easier. So it's kind of cool. The reason I got on this vlog actually is because of uh, 
Two-factor authentication. Authentication. I talked about this in a previous video, but I just want to remind you: two-factor authentication. Authentication. Excuse me. If you don't know what it is, it's just basically having your accounts when you log into some online account, uh, banking accounts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, your Google accounts, your YouTube account, where if you log in, the uh, account in question, the system in question, will send you a text message on your cell phone, and then you have to get you get a code. And it's usually a six digit number and then you have to enter that code before you can log in. This is a, a very important level of security. This means even if somebody were to guess your password with two factor authentication, it becomes they can't get in. They can't get in unless they have your cell phone. So it's pretty secure. And what some people do, if they're very big vloggers, for instance, what they'll do is they will have a private cell phone, a private number only for two factor authentication. Now you can get that uh, up in Canada, you can get cell phones that are not bound to your name, they're just a number, and you pay for that and you're anonymous. Um, a lot of criminals use that apparently, but you can get these at gas stations and stuff. So that might be a smart thing to do, is to get a separate little phone that just is just there for two-factor authentication. It provides a very uh, a nice extra level of security. Reason I mentioned the private phone, because some big YouTubers uh, in the States, uh, they had two-factor authentication, but the, the hacker would just call up the cell phone company and say, hey, uh, can you transfer that number? I lost my phone to this new phone. And the, and, and the cell phone company dweebs would do it, which is crazy. I, I, I would think, I would hope that they would sue the cell phone company for such a breach, because they're not supposed to do that unless you give them all kinds of passwords and you know all kinds of personal information that only you know. Anyhow, I guess that's pretty much it. So two-factor authentication, if you haven't set it up on your YouTube account or any other accounts you use, and if they do offer it, which today they should, especially if there's some personal information in there, um, do set it up because let me tell you, I sleep like a baby now at night knowing that I have two-factor authentication. People just cannot get into my accounts unless they have my cell phone and my private cell phone.